Hi friends, welcome to day 13th, Proverbs 13th, uh, chapter 13th, and so all 13s today. Uh, so glad that you're joining me. As you're getting on, would you just mind um, sharing with others that you're watching? Uh, we see that that just helps a ton and we appreciate it. And frankly, I'm so glad uh, that some of you are even joining me for the first time and will join me for the first time. You can always go back. Uh, hi, my honey, Sean. Oh, you're going to love this, babe, because I'm going to talk about last night and about um, our time with our kids. So Erica, Haley, Becky, Casey, Rhonda, Dana, all my faves, all my people that are with me all the time. And then thank you guys for so many uh, joining just today. You're going to be just getting on today for the first time being like, what is this? Well, you can go back on my Facebook or Life Church Facebook and catch up on all the days. But you also will be able to go to YouTube soon in this next week. And on Jesus Plus Life channel, we will have all of the Proverbs on there so that it's an easy place if if you just want to binge watch, you know, we say binge watch like it's bad and it's not good, but you know, I think binge reading the Bible or right now I'm into binge watching the Bible show. Um, I, when it came out as like, Oh, cheesy, I'm sure it's Christian-y and cheesy. And now I'm watching, I'm like, Holy cow, like Samson, uh, they portrayed him well, such a great, a great storyline. And so well made. But anyway, I'm binge watching the, well, I wouldn't say binge. I watch one a night and sometimes I'm too tired to get through a whole one, but I'm just consistent on the Bible. That's so good. And then there's another show called, um, it's called Jesus, but then it's through the eyes of different people in his life. Joseph, his father, Mary, Mary Magdalene, uh, Pontius Pilate. Man, that one, I'm going to go back and watch that again. That was so good. So anyway, uh, if you're going to binge watch, that's a good one. You can go back and you can watch and catch up on some of these. If you don't have a Proverbs book, you can pull out your Bible right now. We're in Proverbs 13. Okay, guys, yesterday we, we came up to Door County and that was my request that we go to Door County for Mother's Day. And so we did, we opened our gifts and we got my gifts when we got here. I kept saying, thank you. I love my birthday. And they kept saying, it's not your birthday. It's just my quirkiness. And so I got all my birthday gifts and they were all so special and meaningful. It was awesome. And then, um, we had some family time and then the kids went to do their thing, which is pretty normal. You know, they're teenagers. So I had a chance to look ahead in Proverbs 13 and Proverbs, like I said yesterday, and you guys helped me out that it's a pinball where it's that arcade game where you feel like it's hitting all over. It's just boom, boom, boom. And that's how Proverbs each chapter can feel if you're not real steady and reading it closely, you go, is there even a theme to this? And so there are times I'm struggling to find a theme and, but I find it. And I, and honestly, I'm praying God, give me wisdom as I read through this chapter ahead to have wisdom on what you're going to pull out. So yesterday, the wisdom he told me to focus on was, uh, being a peacemaker, not just being a peacekeeper. Now, I'm good at being a peacekeeper because I think uh, one of the gifts us moms have is that if there's a little conflict, just brush it under the rug. Let's smile and guys quit fighting, quit. You know, it's not like they're fighting over a toy now. They're, they're arguing about friendships and things that people said and things that they said. And, and they're really, my, my kids, they're, uh, you know, 20 months apart, 22 months apart they're actually arguing or having discussions about real life, legit things that have a deeper thing. But as a mom, I like to just go, guys, stop. Just no more. Just no more. Just no more talking until we get to where we're going, which I'm shutting them down. But it's just easier to be a peace keeper than a peacemaker because a peacemaker has to go and make peace. And I actually wrote out to the side that uh, you have to fight. The, what we're going to learn today is how to fight for peace. It makes no sense. And even when I wrote it, I'm like, why? That's such an aggressive way to say you have to get peace. You have to fight for peace. Isn't that the opposite? Well, last night we had real life reasons for this to come alive. Uh, have you ever had someone say, don't pray for patience because God will test you? I don't believe really in that theology. <laughs> I think if I'm praying for patience, um, God is starting to give them to me and he probably opens my eyes to things I haven't seen. I don't think that he tests me and he's like, oh good, I'm going to, I'm going to hurt you because you prayed for something. Uh, so I don't believe in that 
full thought, but people have said, and, and it's true, you pray for something and the heat gets turned up. That might be by Satan or it might be God goes, oh, you, you wanted to become a peacemaker. It's a fight. So I write this and about three hours later, we're sitting around a campfire and our son shares with us something. He had fun the night before sitting around a campfire and, um, and they were throwing things in the fire and they were exploding. Well, as parents, like WD-40, as parents, I, I did not, uh, this was not a moment for me to go, let me keep the peace and go, oh honey, that was, that's so great. I'm glad the parents went inside last night and you guys were throwing explosives into a fire. No, I was like, I started talking about war. I started talking about grenades and this is something that will blow your head off. And I start escalating Sean's like, well, I already had this conversation in the car. Uh, then Aubrey brings up, I had a lot of fun at my party. I left at 930, our cast party. After the cast party, man, everything started to happen. She starts listing off everything she got texted about that happened between 930 and midnight at this cast party once the parents went to bed. And uh, and I looked at her, I went, well, I'm sh and she actually said with her own the 14 year old mouth, she said, it's a good thing I came home at 9.30. Like, everything crazy happened after 9.30. Well, as a mom, I say, oh, I would say, now you see why we don't let you stay out because only bad things happen after a certain time at night. So our kids just opened up to us. I did the opposite of what I normally do, which is try to keep the peace at all costs. I just started teaching. And I can't blame it on we're, te we're learning in the proverb study and I'm in teacher mode. I'm in mom mode. And I mean, I couldn't let it go that Isaiah could have lost an arm, that his friend could have been blown through with the can, could have went through his body. It'd be like casualties. I mean, I couldn't let that go. I couldn't let go that uh, next time, do I even want Aubrey to go to a cast party? Because there are boys and girls and because they were doing dumb stuff after 930 and how grateful I am that they're set apart that they come home. Well, this did not go well. Let's just put it that way. Um, by hour two, their voices are loud. Sean and I's voices are loud. And when I say loud, I wouldn't say like, like screaming, but elevated. And we're, Sean and I are back to telling um, them all of our stories that they've heard a hundred times. And frankly, you've heard a dozen times. Well, you know, I ended up pregnant and they're like, it's not going to lead to sex all the time, mommy. And, you know, Sean's like, well, and then my friend in eighth grade got pregnant, got his girlfriend pregnant in seventh and eighth grade. They're like, daddy, we're like freshman and going to be sophomore. So like everything we're saying, they're refuting, which is making us more mad that they're refuting our wisdom. And I thought I, I went to bed and thought, huh, what a mother's day. Did, now, Sean brought it back and said, guys, I think what we're realizing is that mommy and I need to listen more. And I not happily agreed with that. And then he said, uh, and we have to realize we have four leaders around this campfire right now talking. So we're all going to think we're right. We're all going to think that the others are not understanding. We're all going to try to lead. And in my head, I'm going and I'm in charge in charge. And I bring up authority issues and you've got to have submission to authority. And again, I'm escalating it um, because I'm talking about being a peacemaker today. And uh, and in the end, I went to bed and Sean laid in bed and he said, we have to listen more. And I said, I agree. And we went upstairs. We apologized. We said, guys, we we need to not always be in teaching mode. And you always do need to come to us. And we don't always have to bring it around to a lesson in life. Although we need to bite our tongue so hard to do that. So I started to, um, went to bed. It's ended well, you know, we're kissing goodnight and all of that. And I said, guys, just because we got escalated, just because we got into it as a family talking about major things does not mean we're not a good family. Families can do this and get closer because we all said what's in the depth of our heart. And so it ended well, but I still went to bed going, happy Mother's Day and laid my head on the pillow. And Sean came in and he said, he said, no, this is how the enemy would want you to feel to end your Mother's Day. It's all good. We're we're all learning 
And, um, and so I woke up this morning already having my notes. I mean, I've got a big old bunch of notes on my Proverbs and, and, you know, even as I woke up this morning, I thought, and I'm talking on being a peacemaker and the, the whole topic is how to fight for peace. And last night we fought for peace and we failed in some ways and in other ways we did what we were supposed to. And so I'm going to go through the five things as I see fighting for peace in Proverbs 13. Number one, to fight for peace, we have to heed. Heed, that's H-E-E-D. I love that Proverbs makes us look at some of these words that are lost and are forgotten. In verse one, it says, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. And honestly, last night, what we wanted them to do, what we wanted our teenagers to do was to heed to us in all we said and go, yes, mother and father, what wisdom. I mean, you're pastors. People listen to you. Why shouldn't we? In my head, I'm thinking, why can't you just take what we're saying? Why do you have to have a rebuttal? It says, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. And here's the thing. Our kids weren't mocking. Um, sometimes when you're heeding what others are saying, you're listening and taking it in and just if. In case, just even though they might have something to say, it doesn't mean they're they're mockers or they're not they're not taking in the rebukes. So when we heed, number one, we eat the meat, we spit out the bones, and we have to go. What I hear you saying, and it took us till the end of our heated discussion last night for us to say, guys, we need to quit telling you the stories from our past that you've heard a million times. Their theory would be that kids and teenagers and life is so different right now. I would agree with that, Sean, and I would go, yeah, it's way worse. So then that like blows up in their face and they hate that rebuttal. But also, I want to say for hundreds of years, uh, kings and people and peasants and the guy who wrote this and his father were like, oh, we're we're above that. That advice doesn't work for us um, because this is a different day. And for hundreds of years, people have struggled with the same issues the next generation. But here's the deal. I have to listen to what they say and my kids need to and whoever you're working with on fighting for peace, you both have to eat the meat and spit out the bones and say, oh, that's what you're saying. You know, counselors, old school counselors would say, now in communication, what you need to say right now is what I hear you saying, Sean. Sean and I would early on in our marriage for marriage counseling, we would always laugh when we'd have a counselor say, okay, then Sunny, what, what you would say in this moment is you would say, Sean, as you communicate that way, what I hear you saying, and what I'm thinking is, I want to wring his neck. I am so mad. You think I can really, in that little tone, say what I hear you saying. Here's the deal. Peace isn't false and fake and a soft tone when, when it's not there, but it is the next one is guard your lips. So it's heeding, it's hearing what they're saying. Number two, it's guard your lips. It's biting my tongue. If I am a bad fighter or a good fighter, some people are like, oh, I always win arguments. I'm a great fighter. Ugh, not something you need to go for. So guarding your lips is number two. Guard your lips, bite your tongue. Last night, only at the end, did I literally sit in silence for longer than the rest of the two hours we talked. Because I finally went, Sonny, shut up, shut up, guard your lips, bite your tongue. Verse three says, those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. Here's the thing. I'm not looking at running my kids off. Um, and Sean said that I don't want to have kids that they go to college and don't want to come home because, because I mean, and that has been one of our gauges. Do our kids want to be with us even when they don't live in our house? And, and don't have to be with us. And so I don't want to come to ruin in the relationship because I will not bite my tongue. Um, here's the deal. You will be in fights with people where you are smarter than them. And here's the honest truth. And my kids probably won't watch this anyway. Um, in almost everything last night, we were smarter than them. We do know what what eventually leads to sex and how to stop it early. We do know you need to wait to have sex until you're married. We do know that you shouldn't throw explosives into a fire. We do know that. We do know more. We do see ahead of them. As Pastor Lori would say, we see things ahead of them that they can't see. 
but there were times I had to bite my tongue and go, this isn't the time that they're open to hearing my wonderful advice. Number three, how to fight for peace. Be diligent. I love that word. I keep bringing it up chapter after chapter. Be diligent for answers. Desire for both of us to be satisfied. Verse four says, a sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. And, and I think that sometimes we run out the door, we slam the door, um, we give the silent treatment. This might be with a spouse, even in, um, you know, maybe people who have brothers or sisters or, or friends and they, and you just cut it short because you're just like, I'm done with this. I'm done. But the diligent, it says are, uh, the, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied, meaning we have to desire that we both are satisfied with what we come to, that there is some kind of agreement. There is some kind of solution. And if that solution is let's agree to disagree, but love each other and like not let this create a bigger chasm between us, the uh, be diligent for answers. And then number four, for how to fight for peace, be transparent and humble. Again, when you think you're the expert or when you, uh, most of us go, I know I'm the expert in a fight. Being transparent and humble is a different posture. And verse seven says, one who, one person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. Uh, that's a pretending thing. I talked about it in the last chapter. Don't fake it till you make it. Uh, if you are finding out that maybe in this conversation of fighting for peace that you are wrong you saw it wrong be humble enough to go you know what I messed up and in the end uh what I wanted to do last night after arguing with our kids and if you're just logging on you're gonna go back and go what is she talking about uh I didn't want to end it with uh falling on my sword entirely I wanted as a mom what I wanted them to do is go mom you're right some of those choices were poor. Mom, you're right. We don't do those things, but we have to be careful to be around friends that do those crazy things. Well, that's what I wanted it to come to. I'm bit the bigger person and the older person, though. So when I had to twice and then finish the night by going up and saying, guys, we need to talk less and listen more. We're going to quit wearing you out with our stories and lectures. That was a humility I didn't want to have, but I had to have it. And sometimes... In fighting for peace, we have to humble ourselves and be even more transparent than normal. And then verse 10 talks about it, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. We had to even look at our children and go, what's their advice? Their advice is, mommy and daddy, trust us. You can trust us. And we said, we do trust you. But here's the thing, our, our level of loudness was saying to them, that we're so concerned and we don't trust them. So where there is strife, there is pride. And the pride of um, of being in a fight is, no, I want to win. No, I'm right. I didn't wouldn't be arguing if I didn't think I was right. But wisdom is found in those who take advice on both sides. Number five, how to fight for peace. Seek truth and follow it. Verse 12 and 13 both talk about this. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. So the tree of life is, is God, is truth. Uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred would mean like hope comes from the Bible. Hope comes from truth. And when you don't live in truth and seek truth and you don't seek the tree, tree of life, then uh, it, it makes your heart sick. It makes you uh, feel in turmoil. It is not peaceful. And so this is saying in verse 12, seek truth. And then in verse three, 13, it says, whoever scorns instruction will pay for it. But whoever respects a command is rewarded. On both sides of the argument, are we seeking truth? Not just of the truth in that other person's perspective, but the truth in us as well. But in the end, uh, is the truth that is remaining and that is the most important in our moral compass actually the truth from the commands of God? So I'll put it this way, and I know this whole thing, I've wrapped it around this story of us talking to our kids for two hours last night around a campfire, very loudly. Um, 
in the end, we said, guys, here's the deal. We don't want you to not have sex before you're married. We don't want you to not have, this is my point. We're, we're not getting you to that point to say, because mom and dad said so. And um, we, we, we don't want your heart to be broken and you to just kind of get a reputation and just be with anybody anytime and have those regrets. It's not just because mom and dad say so. It's because the Bible commands purity. It commands holiness. It commands that God wants all of our heart. And every time we give that away, now then we get back into the preachy part, but here's the deal, just plain and simple. It's because God asks it. So not only does God ask of things that in the end of a fight or an argument, we go, what does the Bible say? But God commands that we are peacemakers, that we're not just faking it and looking like everything on the surface of our household, our job, our marriage is peaceful and we're peacekeeping, but there is a bomb about to blow up underneath. But we're peacemakers where we let those little bombs go off in times where we need to deal with them. And uh, gosh, talk about lesson learned, talk about, and we told, we told our kids last night, we said, guys, we've never been parents of teenagers and we're not going to use that as an excuse but forgive us when we don't get it right forgive us when we think well we are pastors and people listen to us and we were youth pastors and teenagers hung on every word it appeared um why won't you well you know what um it's not always that plain and simple when you're in relationship and in relationship we have to fight for peace there you go um i hope that you didn't get bogged down in just my story of of Sean and I and our kids that you could see this in the scope of your marriage, in the scope of your work, uh, in the scope of maybe your extended family where it's just peacekeeping, but under the surface, surface, there's a bomb about to explode. And I just don't think that's living a full and complete life. I looked, I talked a few chapters back about the seven pillars that were talked about in Proverbs and seven pillars represent completeness. Pastor yesterday talked about, uh, let me open it back up, about completeness that God was fully satisfied on the sixth day and said it was very good. And in completeness, there's satisfaction and part of completeness in relationship is dealing with things that there needs to be something dealt with and having peace making be the answer, not peacekeeping and brushing it under the rug as awkward as it can get as heated as it can get. We get better in relationship when we have made peace. So, wow, what a day. And so 14, I'm hoping it's about puppies and kittens and, and fluff, right? No. God is good and it's always where we need to be and where we're at. So let's pray. God, thank you for my friends. Uh, thank you my, for my friends that were here live. And, and God, thank you for those who are going to join us throughout the day and the week. And God, ultimately, there's going to be people that are going to watch this in March of 2021. And God, it is going to be just as relevant because your word, your scripture, your verses are relevant every morning, every day. They have been for centuries, so they don't stop being relevant now. God, we love you. Thank you for using uh, our own experience. God, I for sure am not praying for patience so that tomorrow we can have a, a, a test of patience. But God, thank you. Thank you for working it out in each of our lives in the place we're at. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Share this. Let people know. Um, you, you're... Here's the deal. My kids are going to be fine with this because uh, they they know that we are the ones that had to like learn more than anybody. So um, share this. Let people know what it looks like, what it is to flesh it out, to make peace. Love you guys. And we will see you for day 14, 830 in the morning, all week long uh, through Saturday. Love you guys. Bye.